coming at you with a super quick video for today, and I'm coming to you from my new home office. My videos are probably gonna be a little less edited than normal because I am filming and editing these, at least today, during nap time. But right now, it is YouTube video ready. We've got some semblance of a backdrop that looks pretty good in video. So I'm getting ready to launch three new SEO workshops for small business owners. I'm super, super excited about them. I think so much is changing in SEO with AI and things like that. And some things are getting harder and some things are getting a heck of a lot easier. And I'm really excited to share with you um, some ways that we can do this. So definitely go check out those workshops. I also have a free three day SEO challenge you can check out as well. But today I wanted to talk about ways you can do keyword research without paying for a keyword research tool. Pause quickly while I smush the fly that is bugging, bugging the heck out of me right now as I'm trying to record. One second. Now that that's taken care of, let's dive in. Okay, the first free tool that you can use to come up with keywords for your website, whether you're optimizing your general website or whether you're optimizing blog posts on your site is Google. This may sound super obvious, but Google has some really easy ways to see what other people are searching and to get ideas for SEO friendly content and keywords. Let's take a look and I'll show you what I'm talking about. First thing, we're going to hop into an incognito window. So that way we're not seeing any of our past search history or personalized search results. Then we're just gonna start typing a keyword or a topic idea that we have into Google to see what comes up inside of Google Autocomplete. So for example, I love creating content about SEO and different tools that I use in business. And if I come over to Google, say I wanted to create a blog post about HoneyBook and I'm looking for inspiration for different topic ideas or different takes or different subtopics within HoneyBook project management, etc. I could type in something like HoneyBook and already you can see there's a bunch of things showing up here. HoneyBook customer service, HoneyBook reviews, HoneyBook competitors, HoneyBook careers. None of these are necessarily going to be topics that I want to create content about, but say I'm creating a HoneyBook template. I can type in template here and now I'm getting ideas for contract templates, email templates, invoice templates, brochure, workflow templates, or I could type in HoneyBook workflows. Oh, we're looking at, we're getting some other options here, honeypot unrelated, but honeybook automation examples. So this might be a good one. Maybe I'm going to create an entire post with just different honeybook automation examples. And if Google is suggesting this to me, even though it might not have a specific number of people who are searching for this specific keyword, if Google is suggesting it, I can safely assume that enough people are searching for this and that's why it's showing up here. This is a great example of a long tail keyword. So HoneyBook is just a short, sweet keyword, right? But HoneyBook in and of itself is a very competitive keyword. If you search HoneyBook, the brand is going to come up. All their social channels are going to come up. Maybe some blogs by some really popular sites are going to come up. But as a smaller website, I need to go for longer tail, less competitive keywords. So something like HoneyBook automation, still probably pretty competitive. There's a lot of sites potentially trying to rank for that. Whereas HoneyBook automation examples, that could be something that's specific specific enough that I could still show up for that keyword. Let's click on this and see what pops up here. Obviously the branded search results are gonna show up first here. They've got some sponsored listings, but if I scroll down, I can see my friend at the Silva Life here creating some great content. She's already using some of these keywords, but that doesn't necessarily mean you couldn't also try to rank for those same keywords, but it's great to see a brand that's on the smaller side. So for example, while she has a fantastic blog and is ranking really well in search, she's not Forbes or, you know, some of these like huge blogs that are tougher to compete with. You can also see she has a YouTube video here, which is another great search results hack. If you are trying to beat out the competition in search results, a lot of times having a YouTube video or video associated with your content can help it rank above the competition. Now let's come down to this people also ask section here. This is giving us some great ideas for content in the form of questions. How to automate in HoneyBook. A little bit general, what are some examples of automations? This might be a great heading for a topic about HoneyBook automation examples. 
This might be the next blog post that I create. Don't steal it. Can HoneyBook send automation emails? Does HoneyBook have workflows? These are all great topics that could go into this post to help further enhance it. Another thing to look at when you are considering whether or not you might be able to rank for a specific keyword is looking at all the listings on the first page, all the results on the first page and seeing how many are using the exact keyword that you are thinking about using. In this case, I can see these two listings are both using the specific keyword automation examples or automations with examples, while the other listings on this page are just more, here we go again, examples of workflows for independent businesses, create an automation, but a lot of these other ones aren't using that keyword examples in there. So this might again, help me rank for that keyword because it might not be as competitive because only a few of the results are actually using the specific keyword that I'm going after. My next tip is to use AI. I personally use ChatGPT as well as Notion AI, but we're gonna dive into Notion AI for this specific example. This template is using one of my Notion content planning templates. If you wanna check out all of my templates, they're available for sale. I'll put them in the description below. So say I'm creating a piece of content, like I said, about HoneyBook automation examples. I am then going to come down here into the actual place where I would write the post inside of Notion. And you can do this in ChatGPT too, like I mentioned. I'm gonna hit forward slash to bring up my options here, click ask a question, and I'm gonna type in, I'm going to say, I'm writing a post about HoneyBook automation examples. Please give me a list of questions I should answer in this blog post to make it a comprehensive resource on the topic. Keep in mind SEO best practices. We'll hit enter, let it do its thing. One thing I really love about Notion AI is that it can pull from all of your content inside of Notion. For me, everything that I've ever created in terms of content pretty much lives in Notion, video transcripts, blog posts I've written, and Notion can pull from that to get an idea of my expertise and my unique voice. I also love that I'm already using Notion and it's nice to have everything in one place versus having to go to a separate app like ChatGPT to ask questions about things that I'm then going to come paste back into Notion. If you wanna try out Notion AI, I will leave a link below in the description so you can check it out. Let's click insert below here and look at some of these questions. I love this. What is HoneyBook and how does it help manage client workflows? What are the key features of HoneyBook's automation capabilities? What are some examples of tasks that can be automated inside of HoneyBook? How does HoneyBook automation help with client communication? Text reminders for appointments. Love that, that's like one of their features. They're relatively new features, that's really cool. This one's relevant to HoneyBook, but not really relevant in general to the automation topic. It's really neat to see that it's pulling in actual features from HoneyBook, like client picks a payment plan. This is another new feature that's really exciting. But again, not super automation focused. How can HoneyBook help streamline the process from new inquiries to offboarding clients? This is a good one. What are some real life examples of how small business owners and creative professionals use HoneyBook automation in their daily workflows? That's really what the entire post should be about. How does HoneyBook's automation help with creating and sending proposals, contracts, and invoices? And what are the benefits of using HoneyBook for managing client projects and payments? So while I could have just created a super short blog post that has some HoneyBook automation examples in it, these questions just help to give me prompts to make it more of a comprehensive resource that's more likely to get picked up in search. The next tool I wanna tell you about is called Answer the Public. You can create a free account. You're going to log in and then type in whatever keyword that you want to brainstorm topics around, click search. It will show you the search volume of that keyword. But as I mentioned, this is a really competitive keyword by itself. It's going to be very difficult for a small business to rank for this keyword, especially right off the bat, if you're just getting started with SEO and blogging. So what I recommend doing is scrolling down and looking at all of the different questions suggested to you by Answer the Public. It tells you all the different questions that are going to be asked around this particular topic. It presents it in this really cool wheel here so we can see things like, are HoneyBook contracts legal? That's a very important question. Can HoneyBook send text messages? HoneyBook, how to use? How much does HoneyBook cost? How to connect HoneyBook to Squarespace? That's a great topic. Who is HoneyBook for? In this next section, we have preposition questions. So let's see here. Can HoneyBook replace QuickBooks? HoneyBook for interior designers? HoneyBook for nonprofits, 
Is HoneyBook a website builder? It's not, but maybe someday. Is HoneyBook a CRM? Alternatives to HoneyBook? You get the gist. We're just getting tons of great questions here that we could use to create an entire blog series from. All these categories across the top, we've got questions, prepositions, comparisons, alphabeticals, number related posts. So let's look at comparisons. This is a great one for any type of software that you're creating content about. HoneyBook and Squarespace, HoneyBook and Wix, HoneyBook and PickTime. Let's see here, HoneyBook and MailChimp, HoneyBook or Dubsado. That's one of their major competitors. The goal here is just to get a bunch of really great keyword rich SEO friendly ideas to help you create content on your website, whether that's blog posts or pages or things like that. And don't worry too much about search volume. As a small business owner, it can be really helpful to go after those lower volume keywords. And by low volume, I just mean, according to the data, fewer people are searching for those keywords. But that also means that they're probably less competitive and that you have a higher chance of ranking at the top of page one for those words. If you have any other questions about keyword research for your small business, drop them in the comments below. I'd love to know if you've used any of these methods and found success with them. If you're a small business owner and you want to learn more about the ins and outs of SEO, make sure to check out my latest workshop series. Like I said, I'll include a link in the description below, and you can also sign up for our free three-day SEO challenge. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.